Hello, I'm Robert Consoli. I lecture in digital design at the University of Hull in England. And this is part three of a six-part series, Maya 8.5 Basics. So let's get right back into it again. First of all, make sure your shelf tabs are up, like I showed you, to the uh, showed you how to do in the last tutorial, and make sure your menu set is set to polygons, all right? So, I want you to go to Create, Polygon Primitives, Cube, and Box Icon, all right? That's that little box beside the word cube in that menu, all right? The Polygon Cube Tool menu appears over here. I want you to type in the values 8 in width, 6 in the, six in the height box, and 4 in the depth box. Now below that, you'll see another set of windows where you can type 3 into each of the width, height, and depth division boxes. Alright, now place your cursor in the center of the, uh, of the perspective grid in the viewing area and click. Alright? Now, you'll see that you have an object which is surrounded by green lines. What I want you to do is press the keyboard command F8 and change from the object mode, which is green lines surrounding the object, to the component mode, which is a blue line surrounding your object. All right? Now, way up here on the top menu again, click Select Vertex. And you'll see that red dots appear in the intersection of every one of the blue lines in your object. All right? Now go over to the other side of your screen, select the Move tool, that's the little cone with the arrow, yeah? And select any red dot in your viewing area on your object. All right? Now, if you, with one of those dots selected, with the Move tool, you'll see that you get accesses that pop up and then you can manipulate that single dot or vertex. Now I want you to go up to the very top of your screen again and go to Select Face, alright? And now this time you can select with the Move tool the various panels or faces of your object. A little dot will appear in the middle of each one and you can select either one or many using the Shift key, alright? Now with the Move tool Experiment with moving one or two faces around, okay? Now after you've done that, go up to the very top of the screen and, and click on Select Edge. And now, of course, as you might have guessed, this means that the edges of your object are able to be manipulated using the Move tool, the Rotate tool, any of the tools on the left-hand side of the screen. Okay? Now look, you cannot possibly use mouse commands for manipulating objects like this. So what you want to do, instead of going to the top menu, select, you want to just right click on your object and a menu will pop up if you hold down the right click mouse button for a second. All right? You'll see that all the same options are available there if you slide your mouse over them and release it. Okay? I want you to press F8 and return to the object mode so that your object then is surrounded by green lines. Okay? After you've manipulated, it could be any shape, right? But I want you to go up now to the very top menu again, under Mesh, and go to Smooth, okay? And you'll see that all the corners of your object are now rounded off and smoothed. Now, I want you to then press F8 again, and go back to the component mode, which is the blue outlines, and gives you the ability to manipulate your object using vertexes, faces, or edges, and you'll see that all of your edges and faces are very different now, okay? I want you to just experiment with that for a while and get used to using the manipulation tools on the different facets of your object, okay? Now, we're going to build complex objects. So what I want you to do is clear your screen by selecting all of your objects and hitting backspace, all right? Now go up to the very top of your screen and hit create polygon prim primitives, and this time we're going to do a sphere, all right? So left click and drag a sphere on your perspective grid in your viewing area, all right? Now once you've done that, I want you to draw another sphere. Now you might notice that on this side of your screen over here, underneath all of the, the moving tools, that another icon will appear and show you, or will allow you to make the same to, to make the same kind of object again without going to the top menu. In this case, it'll be a little 
spherical icon. You can just press that and make your second sphere as well, okay? Now, I want you, using the move tool, I want you to try and physically move your two spheres together so they overlap. And you'll be able to tell when they do because one will disappear into the other, okay? Now, once you've got both spheres intersecting, I want you to deselect both spheres. Okay, now once they've been deselected, make sure you've clicked on your select tool way up in that corner up there, the first, the first button in the toolbar that runs down the side of the screen, and I want you to now select one sphere, press shift, and select the second sphere, so both of them are selected. You'll notice that the first, you'll notice that the first sphere turns white, okay? Now, check this out. We're going to go up to Mesh, Booleans, Booleans, right, and Union, okay? Now, when you click that, you'll see that both spheres merge together. But you can't really tell if they've done it or not. So I want you to go and hit Keyboard Command 4, so you eliminate the shading, and you can see that all the structure that's intersected between the two spheres has now disappeared, all right? Now I want you to delete that object, and I want you to, to uh, draw two more spheres, and this time I want you to experiment with Boolean's difference. See what that does? And then I want you to experiment with another two spheres with the intersection aspect of Boolean's. All right, so become familiar with those three kinds of image manipulation, okay? Now I want you to delete all of those objects and we'll move on, okay? So, let's go up to Create, up here again, Polygon primi Primitives. This time we're going to select Plane, all right? And we're going to use the box icon next to Plane, okay? So that the Attributes menu comes up over here, okay? Now what I want you to do is type the number 10 into the Width, the Height, the Width Divisions, and the Height Divisions boxes, all four places, okay? So create a landscape now by left-clicking and dragging a, a, a two-dimensional plane in your work area, all right? So, now, using what you've learned about vertexes, edges, and uh, vertexes, edges, and uh, uh, faces, I want you to make a landscape, kind of a lumpy landscape with that plane that you've just driven, uh, just drawn. And when you're finished, I want you to go up to Mesh and Smooth. So you've got a little landscape going here. And all this is important when we refer back to these uh, lessons in, lesson in, uh, in Tutorial 6. You'll use these tasks to create the exercises, which I'll ask you to do in, numbers, in, in Tutorial 6. But that's all for Tutorial 3 right now. So I'll see you again in a minute.